the Gap and Levi's, just two businesses affected by the higher price of cotton. Last week, I sat down with Pakistani billionaire Mian Mohammed Mansha. He is the CEO of Nishad Group. I asked him how rising commodity prices are affecting all his businesses, textile, cement, and banking. Mr. Mansha is the head of the largest business conglomerate in Pakistan, also the country's largest private employer. Last year, uh, 2010, the largest increase in any one commodity was in cotton. Uh, but we were very fortunate because we are the fourth largest producers of cotton in the world. And we could uh, cover some of our cotton at uh, cheaper prices. And we tried to help our customers, uh, uh, Levi's and Gap and all the other customers all over the world. So we were uh, able to accommodate them. Uh, the market seems to be now slowing down because, you, as you know, when things really um, uh, the prices go up, people tend to stock more. And now some destocking is taking place, and that is quite natural. And I hope that prices will come down a bit, you know, uh, which will be beneficial for our buyers. Uh, the buying, I can see, has slowed down a bit, but in the long run, Pakistan has, is positioned very well. Is there ever a price point at which you feel clients such as The Gap or such as Levi's would stop buying cotton or would just buy less cotton and favor different kinds of blends in their end products? Yeah, I think we did see, uh, you know, uh, stop, uh, you know, stop and start, uh, jump start kind of uh, buying by our uh, uh, buyers. But uh, the other blends have also become very expensive, like polyester prices have also doubled in the last year. So the buyers did not have uh, that many options. But now the cotton prices uh, tend to be coming down. Even now I'm looking uh, at Bloomberg, they've gone down by almost 3%. So I think uh, uh, the demand will come back again. Speaking of some of the other businesses and business possibilities that you have, there's a lot of conglomerates such as yours that are getting into the food business. Is this something that you would consider? Yeah, I think uh, my view for Pakistan is that, that there are two businesses which will do very well. Uh, one is food and the other is energy. And I think um, uh, our uh, businesses, we are already looking forward to uh, going into food business because uh, we have acquired some farms and we are looking at, uh, you know, uh, going in, growing corn and wheat and all the other things uh, uh, and packaging industry with it. Uh, also, we are interested in biofuels. So we are using uh, some of the byproducts of the foods uh, like corn cobs, uh, uh, cotton steaks and all that for uh, uh, burning in our cement companies in their kilns to replace coal, which has uh, become very expensive. How much do you think these various food industries will represent to your company's bottom line, to the conglomerate's bottom line, five years from now? Uh, I would say about 20% of our profits should come through uh, the food industry and its uh, byproducts that we are trying to develop. And just for the point of comparison, how much do they contribute now to the conglomerate's bottom line? Uh, not more than uh, one or two percent at the moment, uh, not more than that. So yeah. this is going to be a big growth area for you. Yeah, yeah, you. You mentioned yeah. power as well. You're working on generating your own power. What is the business goal there? Well, uh, my, uh, we produce about 10 percent of Pakistan's total energy in our power projects, which we supply to our own industries as well as the national grid. And we hope to uh, produce more electricity from, uh, uh, you know, as I said, from biofuels. Uh, since we are the fourth largest producers of cotton in the world, we have estimated from the cotton sticks that we have, uh, uh, which uh, we could produce about 6,000 megawatts of electricity. Similarly, all the other agricultural waste, municipal waste, all of them we would like to convert uh, into uh, energy uh, for our uh, national grid. I asked him about the biggest challenge to adding capacity, and he told me it involves the government's failure to pay rising tariff subsidies.